Okay, let's see if this works. Hopefully the stream setup will cooperate today. I know we were having a little bit of issue last night. I should really rename this stream because I'm again not painting spiders. So I'm probably going to be working on this tiny robot for a little while. Who doesn't love a tiny robot though, am I right? Alright, so I'm just getting ready. I am letting everybody know that for once, I am not streaming at a super late hour at night. Uh, so you know, maybe some of the people with insomnia uh, who live in other countries, like Anno, could actually catch something at a time that isn't ridiculous. Um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see what's happening here today. Um, I think I'm gonna just start by working more on this little robot. Hey! Welcome! The Morgan! I am so happy that you were able to catch this stream live. I've been saying that I wanted to stream at other times so people in a variety of time zones could actually catch stuff. And look at that, instant feedback. Exactly what I wanted happened. I don't know why I started in immediately painting yellow when I've been telling myself that I need to do a dry brush before I do anything else on this miniature. I panicked. I got so happy that someone had tuned in right away. Welcome to the stream. Um, I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing. I'm just gonna futz around like I usually do. If you've watched any of my streams, then you'll have a good idea of exactly um, how competent I end up being. Which is, uh, spoiler alert, not very. But I'm really happy to have you here. If you are working on a project, be sure to show it to me by joining our Discord and posting it in the stuff we talk about on streams, uh, tag there. I'm very good at product integration. Look at that. Look at that. I'm gonna paste a link to our Discord in the chat. There. Excellent. Did it. Synergy. We're winning. Yeah, um, you know, competent, it's, it's a state of mind. It's something to aspire to, but ultimately never achieve for me. Uh, but I'm gonna do a bit of dry brushing on the metal parts. I should have a dry brush around here somewhere. That should work. Make him look a little bit more mechanical. Um, and see if we can't get that to work out. I never know if I'm dry brushing well or dry brushing shitty, but I do try. I do make the attempt. When I get it right, it does look good. There we go. Of course, you're very welcome. Happy to have you here. I'm happy for anybody who joins or catches these you've been watching them back first of all like there's so much better content on youtube i can't decide i can't believe you decide to watch a replay of my streams as something uh for content so anybody who does that that's uh that's pretty cool i don't understand you but i appreciate you uh, and let me know if like the stream dies uh, cause sometimes the camera's dumb, or if it freezes, or if my voice sounds weird, or anything like that. Um, currently I have my microphone plugged into my laptop, and it doesn't actually play the sound out back for me, even if I were, like, wearing headphones or something, so I have no idea what I sound like. 
That little robot looks great. Oh, thank you. I am trying very hard on him. He's gonna be part of a diorama that I've been making for my latest video. Um, he's very Borderlands inspired, so of course we had to go with yellow. Um, because my favorite robot in that game is yellow. And then, uh, I did find some decals in a that were included in a white dwarf I bought ages ago, and one of them kind of looks like the Vault Hunter symbol, so I'm thinking I might do some decals on him. I can't really decide if I want to do, like, those, those, like, comic book cell shading kind of lines, like the characters in Borderlands have on them. I don't know if I want to try that out or not on him as well, um, but that's another, another kind of thought. Uh, and I definitely want to give him some rust, so, Jesus. So we'll see how that all works out, um, but I'm hoping to get him finished up today. Basically, I'm just streaming until the lads that I usually play Borderlands with respond to me and say whether or not they want to play Borderlands today. It's like 2.05, we usually play at like 3.30 or 4, so I have no idea what they're up to, or if they're available today, because I'm not good at making plans in advance. But I was like, you know what, I really feel like painting. I've got the time on my hands, why not? I spent the morning playing Elden Ring, um, and I got really far. I did a lot of, like, stuff by accident that led into a quest, and I was really excited about that, because I got to, um, I got to team up with my favorite character in the game a little bit, um, or at least swear allegiance to the same person, so now I feel like we're on a team. I just think EG the blacksmith is, like, really cool. Um... He's just really cool, and I want him to think that we're friends, so I was like, yeah, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll team up with this random witch lady who I don't really trust, and this other sorcerer guy that I don't really trust, but we also get to team up with, um, the wolf knight guy who's really cool. Blythe, I think his name is? Um, unfortunately, they want me to go fight, um in this champion tournament thing in the scary part of the game uh and i'm currently just dying repeatedly because i don't think i am a high enough skill level to actually make a difference in that boss fight so I'm, i might need to go find some other stuff to do uh before i can take down that boss but that's okay i i made some progress I finally got into the underground city that I'd been really curious about, so it was a it was a productive day in Elden Ring, and I hadn't actually gotten around to having one of those in quite some time. Turns out, if you level up the weapons that you actually know how to use, you can be a lot more effective in the games you play. Who would have guessed? Yeah, with this it's less, um, less blacklining in the traditional sense, which honestly I could still, I could still learn how to do better. I could, I sh could and should level up that, uh, skill, but this is more like if I want to add that specific, like, stylistic Borderlands kind of shading stuff. Not really shading, more just, you know what, actually I can pull up a photo of of the inspiration that we're going with here i can show you this is the modern age I can pop a little photo there hang on should be able to do it easily enough a good reference photo.
probably good to have a reference photo anyway. Do, do, do. Uh, excuse me. Add image. Okay. Browse. Okay, that made it really big, but we'll shrink it down. Uh, so this is a little robot in the game, and if you look, you can see that he has, like, some pretty stylized lines, um... Okay. Oh no, there we go. Uh, some pretty stylized lines on him. Quite a lot of weathering, but it does give that kind of like Borderlands stylistic feel. Uh, so that's that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, and this is, this is our boy to compare that boy to. We got a ways to go. Um, it looks like adding some white stripes might be something to do. Definitely got to add in a lot of dirt and mud, but it's kind of like those little lines at the top. Um, it's very stylized, so... We'll see if we can kind of recapture that with our boy. His name is not Claptrap. His name is Albert. Um, not because that's his official name, but just because that's what I felt like when I looked at him. He, he looked like Albert to me, so that's what his name gets to be. I'm going to hide that image for now because I my keyboard decided to stop connecting to my computer. Um, so I got to get a new one. Uh-huh. And I've been using, like, it's a touch screen, it's a surface, so it's hard to, like, adjust and minimize shit with all of that going on. Um, yeah, but that's, that's basically what we're going for. Claude, Al Claude's a good name for a mech, too, I think. Um, yeah, but that's, this is Albert, um... He's just a little guy. I think that's most of the metallic bits. I gotta finish getting inside there. Definitely this would be a good project to use. Um, if I had pigment powders, this would be a great one to use them on. Uh, I don't have pigment powders, so I will not be using them on this project. I don't have any chalk to grind up or oil pastels or anything like that that I can kind of make. I guess, mm, I don't even think I have like colored pencils that I could grind up. I could go to the dollar store and get some, but I don't know. I think he'll be okay without it. I'm gonna have some like light and I do want to bring in, you know, a bit of my own style to it. So he's not going to be just straight up Borderlands, but Borderlands inspired. So it's deciding which element of that style I do actually want to take and which I'm going to going to leave behind. He's part of a diorama. So in the end, he has to fit in with that diorama's world more so than anything else. good news is the diorama is almost completely finished. I just have two elements on there that I need to finish. Gonna 
try and get a little bit of a second coat on this yellow. Usually I wouldn't bother with a second coat, but I mean, there's not really a whole lot of detail on this guy when you get right down to it, so having some nice smooth coats will probably look good. Although, I, me and my ability to make a coat of paint smooth is, uh, well, it's something I could stand to work on and level up at. It's probably going to be chunky because I got to do a lot of layers and I don't bother to thin anything, but we'll just call that texture an element of style and then boom, it's fine. Gotta cover up all the places where I messed up too, that's an important element of a second base coat. Because I certainly am not perfect. Rarely very neat when I'm painting. Don't know if you'll see the cats today. They're usually napping about this time. Well, I can change up the time that I stream. I don't think my cats are so apt to change up the times that they nap. Usually Hector will come along and chime in and see whatever I'm doing, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Smoothness is overrated anyway. I agree. I mean, it can look really amazing, but... It's, uh, it's not something I've attempted to achieve in my own work so far. Though, the other night, I did do some pretty fun painting experiments. I was testing out this new material to see if I could get my miniatures to look like they were coated in sugar. Um, and the results are very, very cool. I, uh, I can show you, actually. I've got them right here. <laughs> yeah, that that could happen, Tigress. They do seem to have that sixth sense. Um, but yeah, here's one of them. I painted up these little orcs the other night and tried out a couple different methods, getting this fake sugar to adhere to them. Some of them have definitely worked better than others. This one's pretty solid. This one, the sugar flakes off quite a good bit. So I think Mod Podge has actually ended up working better than um, just a glaze medium. But you can see, hopefully you can see, hopefully it's showing up on camera a little bit, that um, they have this dusting of sugary stuff on them. Synthetic sugar. Who would have guessed that that A existed and B would do exactly what I wanted it to do? Yeah, that's what I was going for, Morgan. That's that's what I wanted. Um, that's exactly what I was after. I'm glad that that was the uh, the look that you thought I was going for because I definitely was. I don't want to do like a sour gummy corn team. I don't, I'm not ready to commit to that exactly, but I do have the skull taker model and it's kind of sitting there like, don't you just want to paint this in that dumbass color scheme? Uh, and if I'm honest with you, yes, yes, I do. But 
I think I need to look at a couple other options. See if I can actually get that sugar ground up slightly finer, which, you know, just makes me sound like a weirdo, but... Uh, we'll see if I can manage that, because right now it is a little chunkier than I'd like it. I know it's kind of asking for a lot that my extremely tiny powder for my extremely tiny miniatures uh, get tinier, but... I mean, there's like mortar and pestle shit. I can find a way to grind that. I don't have a food processor, and if I did, I'd be using it for food, so I don't know. I don't know that I would want to do that to a coffee grinder or anything either. Like, I feel a little bit bad about using a hyper-specific tool for that, so. Uh, method of, like, using a heavy rock thing to smash to smaller thing is probably my intended method of choice there. I'm gonna employ that caveman strategy. See if it works. It may, it may not. But I won't know unless I give it the old college try. Sugar Patch Kids uh, themed kill team. Yeah, that would be pretty fun. Honestly, they paint up super quick. Cause uh, it's basically like, yep, you paint them one solid color, you dust them in the sugar, and then they can be considered done. I'm not exactly sure, like, where I want to take it or what I want to do with it. Like, it's still an idea in development, so got a lot of room to work on that. you guys uh, check out the new Underworlds models that were announced? Those Skaven look pretty cool. I never seem to paint Skaven when I have them on hand, so... I don't know that I'll be picking those up, because I don't, I don't think that they'll ever get painted, but... Uh, they do look very cool, and my friend Destro, who's really into Skaven, uh, is excited about having some plastic rats. I'm always like, yeah, it would be really fun to do a Secret of Nim themed uh, Skaven army, clan, whatever. Whatever they- I think they're clans for Skaven. Um, but then I just end up talking about Dawn Bluff animation for forever. I don't know if that's my gonna end up morphing into my niche where I was just gonna paint stuff to look like candy and then I accidentally start uh, talking about animation and how that can relate to your Warhammer miniature paint schemes. Certainly whatever facet of that that I immerse myself in, it's gonna be passionate either way, which I think is cool. And, uh, I can't say either one would be painting like the box art, so... <laughs> I've, uh, I've got that pretty down. Neither of those elements would be changing. I have been really hung up on the, uh, Japanese film Akira as well, since I saw that for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Can't stop thinking about it. I've watched, like, I don't know, nine or ten video essays about it. Um, and I think that doing an Akira-inspired color scheme would be really cool. One of the interesting things about that film is the colorist of the film. Because so many of the scenes were set at night. Um, and it's way harder to do lighting on a night scene than it is for a day scene. 
and then of course animation like none of the color or lighting exists diegetically so you have to add it all in um i think they used quite a lot of colors for that film but the thing that interests me the most about it is usually people will use blue and green tones for night scenes um, but instead the colorist asked the director who is also the creator of the uh, of the manga that inspired the story he was like yo um, I really want to do something unusual for this night lighting instead of using blues and cold tones I want to use reds and warm tones so that's actually what they ended up going with for the film and it looks really unique and interesting you can see it a lot in that scene where they're like at the mall or whatever and then that gets it gets attacked um there's a lot of like night but done with red lighting which i just find super interesting so translating that into a cyberpunk color scheme might be kind of fun. But then again, I don't even like the film Akira. I watched it and I was like, yeah, I really don't like this, but it's still stuck in my head. I can't stop thinking about it. It's very interesting how, uh, how movies will do that to you sometimes. Whether you want them to or not. When I say things live in my head rent-free, yeah, they don't pay rent and they don't leave either. Hey, Keegan! Nice to see you! How are you doing? Surprised to see me in the daytime? I bet. Okay, let me set him aside. His yellow paint can dry. I also got sent this in the mail by my friend Liam. Uh, this is a Gundam kit that I now have and should probably try and assemble at some point in time. I've got all the pieces. They're labeled. Um... I can put together a little, a little robot man. It feels like two of the pages are stuck together, but I don't think they- Oh, it just, it just folds out into one big old sheet. It's not like a book. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know who this guy is, this particular RX-782, or what anime he's from. But I have him now. So that's kind of fun. I've never put together a Gundam before. So I might I might have to get around to doing to trying that uh, sometime soon. I should also grab all of my decals and see what we have to apply to this guy. That's OG Granddaddy Gundam. Okay, that doesn't really help me, but thank you. Oh, his name is just Mobile Suit Gundam? Is he the Mobile Suit Gundam? Liam wrote me a note which told me how to like talk about him. He wait, I have it right here. It's an entry grade Gundam, the classic RX782, aka Grandpa. Yeah, so I was told. I was told he was supposed to be called Grandpa. Ugh, let me grab another set of decals that I have. I have quite a lot of options for what we could put on the boy. It's the first one from the first anime. Okay. Well, then I guess he's probably a good one to start with. Whenever I do eventually assemble him. I don't know if that'll be today. 
And I don't know at what point I should decide what, um, what decals to use, but we have a lot to choose from. I was kind of thinking of going with this one, because it's just like, I mean, that looks like the Vault Hunter symbol quite a lot. It does have some, like, cool wolf skulls and things. And then, I don't think I'm gonna have a need to use any of the, uh, the Blood Bowl decals, but I have them. I've saved those for some reason. Um, and I've got, like, these ones, which I'm actually thinking I could use some of the checkers. Because they have a couple of gun- they have a gun manufacturer in Borderlands who puts checkers on everything. And then, I like these numbers, too, from this Admech one and these, like, hazardy warning things. So I feel like I could throw a couple of, uh of different things on him. And they look pretty good. <laughs> Entry grade should be a breeze after Warhammer. Good. That's good to know. Uh, I'm excited for when my chunky Gundam boy that I pre-ordered eventually comes in. I don't know how well it's gonna do, like, taking primer and stuff like that. I'm a little bit worried about how easy it's gonna be to paint up um, when I get round to that, but... We'll find out. We'll explore that together. I decided I wanted to make his little power claw kind of glowing here, so... gonna just add another base coat of what the light's gonna be. Most things in Borderlands do not glow orange, but um, in the pre-sequel on the loading screen, they have this like great vision of the moon and it's um it's got some orange glow to it, so I figured why not? They take primer really well. Spray primer from your experience? Awesome. Okay, cool. If they take primer, hopefully they'll take paint too. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, it won't be, it won't be a pain to try and customize a guy. But I'll find out. I'm thinking that, because a lot of the time with Gundams, it seems like it's pretty traditional for them to be like a solid color in most of the places. So I'm thinking that if I just get some colored primer that has like a bit of shine to it, so it still looks like the kind of plastic that, you know, Gundams are, are built from, then that should be pretty good for uh, getting the base coats established, and it seems like, just from what I see on these kits, you can kind of block out, um, what parts are supposed to end up being what color, so the color changes shouldn't be that difficult, in theory. You've yet to paint one, but lots of folks do paint them. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah, I I mean it seems like a fairly creative heavy hobby. So I would think that there are people who want to customize their their things. Enamels, oils and similar are all really common in Gunpla. Okay. So they're not so different from us.
one day, one day I really will knuckle down and learn how to use my airbrush so it'll be a lot easier to make things look like they're glowing. Today, obviously, is not that day, but it'll be one of these days. No Gundam is complete without a heavy coat of streaking grime. Mm, I don't know about that. I don't have any streaking grime, so... If I paint a Gundam, uh, it might have to live without that. I watched episode 2 of Iron-Blooded Orphans. Still enjoying it, so... Seems like I'll make it to at least episode 3. It's the first uh, Gundam-focused anime I've watched in a while. Figured if I'm going to be painting a Gundam from that anime eventually, I should probably know a thing or two about it. Or at least I can learn how to pronounce some of the, the names of stuff. But uh, the Gundam I want to paint is apparently a bad guy, so that that might not be so nice to learn. Gotta get all the little lights on there. And then, we'll see. I think I'm gonna hit the metal parts with some Moan Oil while I decide what I want to do with the lighting. And try and figure out what I want to do with the decals as well. And if I want to put a white stripe on him or not. I think there are a couple uh, decals actually that are just like white stripes or white symbols so maybe we can use some of them. I'm trying not to like go crazy with the freehand on this one. This is supposed to be a fun little diorama project that you know doesn't take me 20 years to complete. Um, but, I am myself, and I can't escape the fact that sometimes I really do just like to, uh, go ham on projects. Whew. I really do also apparently have to have every paint on my desk all at once. What do they put in Nuln Oil that makes it just make things look good? Goes for making my black undercoat and my slightly lackluster dry brush. 
goes from making that look kind of like crap into, oh yeah, I buy that as a mechanical element of this little robot man. Jeez. I don't know what the secret sauce to all that is, but... I sure do appreciate it being available to the masses. Could you imagine if this was one of those things that just no one ever told you about? Then you discover one day that there's a magic syrup that makes your mini painting real good. I'd be pissed. I'd be like, why did you keep this from me? Why did you make this forbidden knowledge? Fortunately, in this era of mini painting, doesn't seem to be the case. Made from freshly squeezed gnomes. <laughs> Don't know what's in there, but apparently you can make your own wash with dish soap. Yeah, um, I've seen people do that. Um, I'm sure I could try, but like, I could also just not, um... The convenience factor of having the same color every time is a big draw for me. Because often I am painting teams or armies... Uh, and they all need to look uniform. They all need to look the same. And then if a new model gets released further down the line, I want to be able to know what I did. So I can paint up the new one to match the old ones. Uh, with something like this boy, obviously, that's not as much of a priority. He's very much a one-off. I'm probably only going to paint him and not another... Um, chibi robot mech, mostly owing to the fact that I bought one, um, and he's not for a game or anything, he's just a little, just a fun little guy, um, Probably should have painted in the lighting after I did the wash, but we'll go back and we'll make everything look good. He's not done yet. He's far from it. It is hard because he's a part of a diorama piece that I can't- he doesn't have a base, so he's a little bit harder to keep track of. Um, in terms of holding him and painting him at the same time. I really am sad that I don't just have a painting handle that I can pop him on and have that take care of all my problems. If I get the wash somewhere it's not supposed to be, that's okay. He's supposed to be a little grimy and a little dirty anyway, so... We can make it some engine oil, or we can paint it over with some rust, or we can fix it with more yellow. It's nothing for me to panic about. Your best friend refuses to use washes because he's so early in the hobby he can't completely understand the process and he's too stubborn to let the veteran painters teach him anything. Hey man, sometimes you you gotta let you gotta let people go on their own journeys. And if that's if that's where he's at that's where he's at, you know? Let him- let him figure it out on his own. I- I was seeking so much painting advice when I was starting out, so... I definitely did not want to, uh, make all of the mistakes and figure everything out on my own. I was very receptive to getting advice from more experienced hobbyists. And I'm glad I did. I learned a lot. But also, I feel like I am still fairly experimental. I don't think using Reichland Flesh Shade on reds is anywhere close to illegal. I think it makes it look really good. Of course, I'm not really an authority on what's legal or not for your models. Um, I've definitely committed some hobby crimes. More, more oft than not, I would say. Pretty 
much most of my hobby methodology is just various crimes. But people seem to enjoy watching me commit hobby crimes, so... Who am I to deny them? Alrighty. That'll do for him. That wash is gonna have to dry for a little while. So I'll set set Albert over to dry somewhere. You get it dry off camera. Yeah, it's really good for anything red, anything brown. Even over gold, it's quite nice, actually. I found that it, it does work pretty, pretty well for golds. My computer's freezing up a little bit. Give me some time to get that sorted out. I apologize. There we go. Alright, so while he's drying, we do still have a few options we could work with. Um, I do have uh, a Blood Bowl tournament that I'm supposed to play in on the 23rd. Um, and I was gonna try and finish up some more members of my Black Orc team. I have two star players, and I have this beautiful troll that I've been uh, painting. But, I got a better idea for a Shambling Undead team. My buddy was like, I can get you a Shambling Undead team by like the 17th. So, of course, my dumbass is like, hell yeah, I'll do that. Uh which will give me approximately a week to get those painted fully painted and based i have i have finished blood bowl teams that i could be using for this tournament but for adepticon i mean all of my cruel boys were painted very quickly Speaking of, I have a, a, I think I'll work on this cruel boy while talking, because I'm pretty, I'm pretty well versed with my, uh, with my cruel boy's paint scheme, so I think I can do them up without too much trouble. But, yeah, uh, I, instead of using one of my fully painted ready-to-go Blood Bowl teams, plan to register for the tournament, with one of the teams that I will have to assemble and paint within a week. And you're thinking, oh, that's fine. You probably have a simplistic, easy to paint color scheme in mind, don't you, Fives? Wouldn't that be logical? Wouldn't that make sense? Uh, and you're not wrong. It would make sense if I had done that. But uh, no, Abs absolutely not. It will not be simple to paint. Probably have a, a good deal of experimenting that I still need to do. A good deal of freehand that I still need to do. And it will in fact be dubious if I can get it done. And uh, as of now, I don't even have the team in hand. So, the odds of that being finished before the tournament... Well, we'll just, we'll just see what happens. I was, ex I was supposed to have gotten them on Friday, and it felt more viable then. Felt like, yeah, I could, I could spend the weekend painting these guys. I'll, I'll get it done. Uh, but there was a delay, so I didn't get it on Friday. And now, um, now we're gonna see if I... 
I can put that together at all. But, you know, no, no guts, no glory, as they say. And I'm a they, so I'm allowed to be one of the they's that say that. That's how being non-binary works, I think. You just get included in the things that they say. feels weird to be painting another Cruel Boys model again. This is the um, Adepticon Con exclusive buddy that I picked up. I'm pretty sure he's just a Swamp Caller Shaman, which I already have like, you know, 200 of. And by that I mean I have two. One of which is painted and a part of the army, the other is uh, just kind of chillin'. Most of my point lists don't afford uh, two Swamp Call of Shamans. But I like this guy. He's a little different, and he's definitely a Skull Bugs, because he's got bugs. From this specific angle, it looks like he's wearing a top hat because you can just see this bit and the the rim of like where his little blindfold is. And it's not a top hat, it's just the eyeball he has strapped on the top of his head. But that is very funny. I don't think he even has any like special in-game abilities or anything like that. He's just an alternate sculpt, which is kind of cool. He's not even my favorite um like alternate or hard to get cruel boy model. I really like there is a um There's a store anniversary one where the guy has a little bird. He's pretty cute. I like him a lot. I'm running pretty low on all the colors that I was uh, using for my cruel voice. They're all, they're all dying slow deaths. He's got this big old shell kind of thing on his back, which is different? I haven't seen that before. Most of the time they have a skull, so not sure what Warhammer creature this belongs to. I bet he has some kind of lore on him that I just haven't read. Because there wasn't like a stat sheet or anything with him in his little special box that he came in. They haven't announced prices or release date for Ash Waste yet, have they? I'm trying 
trying to keep an eye out for that so I can be sure that I've pre-ordered that for my local game store and that I can afford it. I'm very worried about what a what a Necromunda starter box is going to cost nowadays. It's also really weird to only be painting one of these models at a time because uh for my cruel boys i was really i was batch painting these guys for uh for armies so it was quite a lot of paint like 62 models all at the same time Haven't kept up with new GW releases. Necromunda does have some really awesome models. Yeah. Yeah, they recent, like, fairly recently, I think it was an Adepticon announcement that they, um, announced Necromunda Ash Waste, which is the new... I feel like I want to call it a campaign setting, but I don't know if it's, like, actual, like, a new version of Necromunda, or if it's just, like, a really big expansion... It feels like DLC for Necromunda, but like good DLC instead of just like, ooh, we're changing the rules so you have to buy more models type DLC. Uh, but I've never played Necromunda before. I've been really interested in it, but uh, none of the gangs kind of caught my attention uh, until I saw those guys with giant bugs, and I really dig them. Giant bugs are cool. So I'm actually... You know, I'm fairly excited about that. I was thinking that I might do, like, a cyberpunk color scheme. And I do have this, um, this model right here that I painted up forever ago. And he's kind of got this, like, silver coat with blue and pink neon lighting sort of look to him. Which definitely works for a cyberpunk aesthetic. Um, I'm just not sure, because after reading the little bits of lore that they've put out for this team, um, it's like, yeah, they shunned the technology of the hive cities and went to go live out in the desert. Uh, so painting them as cyberpunk, uh, little guys might not be the most lore accurate. He would probably look dope as hell, though, so I might do it anyway. I'm a painter before a gamer, honestly, so we'll see what happens. I really like that they just stitched a little tail onto this cape. Like, they could have left that part cut off and he would have been fine, but it felt really important to give him that little tail. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to paint checkers all over this cloth. I'm in that uh, part of miniature painting where I start two million projects and have not finished any of them. So I just have a lot of stuff that's in various states of half completed 
and then I keep acquiring new projects. It is not the healthiest or best way to do this hobby, but gosh darn if that ain't relatable as hell. Hola. That is Spanish for hello. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for informing me of that. Uh, welcome. As you can see, I'm streaming at a different time, so... We're getting... Getting hobby done before 7 o'clock at night today. Who would have thunk? Back to painting orcs, though, so don't worry. Things haven't changed uh, too much here. As much as I had gotten sick of painting Cruel Boys orcs when it felt like I was painting them back to back, now I'm like, oh man, I have a lot of choices to make on other models that I'm working on. Might as well go back to something that I don't have to think about that hard. Steven Rogers. Captain America is with us. Except you live in the UK. <laughs> Thank you for joining uh, one of the streams. Happy to have you here. Yeah, it isn't seven. What is this yellow ball of fire in the sky? I'm so confused. You're painting it long and you got a space marine on your hobby desk. Alright, what, um... What chapter of Space Marine are you painting? What is the formal pronoun for non-binary? <laughs> is it sir and madam at the same time or neither? Sir nor madam. <laughs> My dude. There actually isn't one as far as I'm aware. Um, I actually had that conversation with somebody else fairly recently. Uh, I think people have been trying to like find one or make one. And there's a lot of, like, neo-pronouns circulating out there that could be one. Um, but as far as I'm aware, and remember, I'm just one non-binary individual. I am, I don't speak for the mass as a whole. Um, but so far as I'm aware, I do not know of one. Hector is now here, if you can hear him. They can hear you, heck, I'm sure. Well, you know, if you weren't scratching the back of my chair, I'd put you on camera, but I can't reach around to you back there, bud. Uh, I like when people use captain or comrade or just something that's like... I heard someone was colonel once. Like, a lot of formal military-type titles have just been like, oh, I have no idea... Sir, man, no, Captain, Captain works fine. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, there, there isn't one. Squish that, heck. Do people want to see you, heck? Where'd you go, baby? Where's my baby? 
Where'd you toddle off to? Come back here. Yeah. Yeah. There's a heck. Daytime Hector, whose hobbies include sitting in the sun and napping. And napping in the sun. A beautiful boy of diverse interests. That's our Hector. You gonna run along now? Or are you gonna cause mischief? He, for some reason, wants to be directly behind the chair. Uh, which, you know, doesn't make for the best. Uh, here, I'm gonna stop and pet Hector for five minutes type shot. But, you know, he is there. He's chiming in. I don't know that chief works. I think that actually has significance in indigenous communities, at least. And I'm sure that, like, a lot of military titles have significance in, um, military communities. Uh, I don't think there is a perfect answer. Um, so, you know. It's kind of... Uh, more on that story as it progresses, basically, but... I haven't researched it particularly. <laughs> Aww. Love a good old cat. They're such good babies. Hector is not old yet, though. He's still very young. I don't know that he'll ever grow out of being a kitten, either. He's very rambunctious. In the grand scheme of things, he uh, Lobster, his brother, is not really that old, either. Sir! Go run and play! Go run and play. Or nap. We were doing so well without being interrupted by you. We were. Yeah. We were. He's very offended by that. It's true, though. We were getting along just fine. Oh, he meant, like, engineer? Like, chief engineer? Hmm. That could work. It's gotta be something that doesn't necessarily convey seniority. So, like, I don't- I don't know what it would be. Um, I'm not a linguist. You're doing a Castellan of the Rift. I have never heard of that particular space marine conglomerate. Um... That sounds cool. Are they, uh, are they loyalist or chaos? God, we're gonna hear me try and attempt to talk about space marines when I don't know jack shit about space marines. That is not gonna go well. Are they a successor chapter of anybody? Do these words sound sufficiently Warhammer? I think they do. I think I'm asking real questions. If you'd like to, Steven, um, we do have a lovely little Discord community. I don't know if you have a Discord or if you're interested, but if you want to post photos of your Space Marines, we have a lot of people who know a lot of shit about space marines and talk about the Warhammer lore, and I just sit there and smile and kind of try and learn things, but I'm sure there'd be some folks who are really excited about the prospect of someone painting a Castellan of the Rift. <laughs> yeah, I can tell... <laughs> Well, I mean, honestly, if anything, I should be calling Hector Captain, because he's named after Captain Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, but, you know. 
In terms of your deep lore knowledge, they are um, the green ones? Yeah, that sounds good. I, I can I can do that. I think the green ones are usually salamanders or dark angels. But this is the green ones? Yeah, I can I can chill with that. You know that space marines are marines from space. Good job, Josh. Yep, that's a space marine. I learned that Thousand Sons, which I thought were guys, are just like giant reanimated piles of dust in power armor. That's pretty interesting. They're also a fucking pain in the ass to play against because they don't fucking die. set him another project that I'm just gonna momentarily set aside <laughs> and we'll see how our little robot is doing it's looking good looks like the wash is mostly dried gotten into all the little cracks and crevices and made him look good I really kind of want to start putting decals on him even though I should probably weather shit first and I should probably finish the lighting first but I'm not going to do any of the stuff that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, let's see. I really like the idea of trying out these checkerboards. Usually I freehand the checkerboards myself, but... I think there's a gun manufacturer in Borderlands called Torg. I'm pretty sure... Torg is the one that has random checkerboards on things. Which isn't very, you know, Hyperion adjacent. That's another gun manufacturer in Borderlands, and that's kind of where I got the yellow from. But I'm like, I'm 60% sure that there are Torg guns with checkerboards and the color yellow on them. That sounds like a real thing and not just shit I made up. And if it is shit I made up, who cares? It's a Borderlands-inspired robot. Well, okay. Apparently Hector is very concerned that I'm not following the Borderlands lore exactly, but... It's what you get when you're not a real gamer, heck. Let's see. I think it'll be fun to put checkerboards on his little leggies. I think it'll be fun, Hector! Why you gotta critique my ideas, bro? This isn't a collab, this is just me. I don't see you spending your allowance on chibi mechs. You spend it all on catnip again. Explosion noises, that's Torg, yep. That's the guy. Uh, okay, wow. Holy shit, okay. Lots of people all saying stuff all at once. I'll get to you, chat. We'll do this. I love this. You'll pop a work in progress pick on the Discord. Excellent. Scarab cold terminators are very funny. I don't know what that is. How liquidy is that turbo dork paint right there? Uh Mini got Mini got think like a good mustard? I don't know what- Josh, you're gonna have to translate your fucking sentence there, because that makes no fucking sense. Um, Turbo Dork is fairly thin, in my opinion. I don't ever think it looks good until I've put a wash over the top of it. Sir. 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 Alright, gonna trim off the ends, and then we're gonna watch me fucking fail at putting, uh, transfers on stuff, which is definitely gonna be a sport. Top tip for putting on transfers, uh, because I don't have Microset or Microsol, and I'm sure as hell not gonna- Hector! Hector, you have- No! 
Get down! Buddy, no! <laughs> Buddy, you can't be in the drawer. No. <laughs> some, some minis may have gotten damaged in the process of Hector's chaos. Um, first, okay, I'm impressed that that fucking chaos didn't break. What? Yeah. We got a lot of spider guys in there. Apparently I can't open that drawer too far or Hector's just gonna decide that that is his perch. Okay. Yep, apparently I picked this up. That's fine. Whoop. Wow. That is... You're not... No one's gonna... No one's gonna believe how perfect that placement was. For just picking it up with my finger and plopping it onto the model. But that is damn near exactly where I wanted it. Holy shit. That was professional. And after some cat-induced chaos, too. Your fave could never, unless your fave is me, in which case I just did. Tell you one thing, this sure as fuck beats freehand in all these checkers. Cause I have done that. Are you fucking kidding me with this? What? Who is this person who sticks decals on correctly on the first fucking try? S they're certainly not me. They're some kind of wizard. Let's see if I can get this just right. probably not have put the seam for this on the front because that's just unnecessary challenge that I now have to contend with but that's okay I to be fair I thought it was all one solid piece and then it wasn't actually could stand to be trimmed slightly. It's just gonna be me pushing around this sticker for like 10 minutes. That's that's what the stream has become now. I'm really sad that that wasn't just a solid piece that I could have used, but... You know what? That's how they're making transfers nowadays, and that's okay. Let's see if we can't just uh, get that slid around. That looks about right. There we go. Just gotta 
pinch it up from the bottom part where it's um there's like a little lip to the plate there there we go i think that looks pretty good that looks pretty pretty darn acceptable I can do some weathering or something, or put a hazard sign there so it looks like it's supposed to cut off there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Looks the right amount of uh, intentional Borderlands chaos to me only being so good with decals chaos. Because I'll probably just slap a logo in the center where those two, uh, those two diverge. Because now that I think about it, that's probably a really good way to do that. Um, ideas that come to me, you know, as I'm working on this as opposed to before. But that's fine. Torg is a reference to Zorg from Fifth Element. Okay, I've never seen Fifth Element, so that, that would not have uh, struck me as a reference. Hi, Goober. Welcome to the, the stream. Good to see you here. Ah, yours got thick. Um, they do need a good shaking, Turbo Dork Paints. They really do. Um, so maybe if you didn't shake yours well enough, that's, that's a possibility there. They're really kind of, um, finicky about how much shaking they need, so... You might want to um, try shaking yours up a bit more. Okay, this one's all one solid piece, so I have no idea what was up with the last one. Maybe I broke it somehow, which, honestly, would we be surprised if that happened? No, we wouldn't. It would literally be par for the fucking course. Yeah, because this one's going on much easier. Just because, uh, it's all one thing. You just kind of line up one end, the corner that I need it to go in, and then we'll trim the excess, get it all stuck down in place. I think it's right about at that that dividing line. There's probably a way more elegant way to do this, don't get me wrong, but uh, this is the method that I'm going with today. And I have broken the transfer. Brilliant, a masterful uh, example of probably why people do not apply transfers with their fingers, typically. Don't follow my example. Anybody who's thinking, oh man, that seems really simple and easy and like the good way to do things. If I'm demonstrating something, almost 99% of hobbyists will agree that you should be doing things the exact fucking opposite way. Um, fortunately, the tear in this one is much easier to conceal because it's just in a less... Uh, conspicuous location. That's already shifted, so I gotta fix that. But this one doesn't want to sit flat. Can you imagine? I was thinking of wrapping one around the little, like, 
stripe bit there. I still kind of want to do that, but the chaos that that would be, hmm, I don't know if that's a good idea. Can you please get stuck back where you were? Thank you. I'm gonna put a little warning sign there or something, just so, just so that, um, that front bit doesn't stick out quite quite so much I'm trying to smooth this one out cuz it seems seems like he's got a little wrinkle up in there which I can either learn to live with or try and uh stick down I don't know why that doesn't want to lay flat, but it sure friggin' don't. Ironically, uh, for a gun manufacturer that's all about explosions and shit like that, I cannot see Mr. Torg ever having the patience to apply a water slide transfer to a mini. Also, sorry if half of this is off camera. That is me being bad at slide transfers, desperately trying to fix the mess that I've created. And just continuing to mess up other parts of the slide transfer. Honestly, this is probably why I should have just freehanded the checkers if I was going to do them, because they would have taken me less time. He still does look pretty cool, though. Not going to lie. I've got all these cool, like, Adeptus Mechanicus little, like, warning symbol looking ones, so I think I'm going to use some of those to hide the gaps. Sorry if this doesn't make for the most engaging viewing. Just happens to be what I'm doing today. That one spiraled off. There we go. Start that one a soaking. And this other little guy. Still remember how proud I was when I finally managed to apply my first transfer. These were a tricky thing for me to figure out. Do I have them figured out now? Well, watch this stream and ask yourself. Your mileage may vary. Mine certainly does. A lot. Depending on how much patience I have in a given day. How many times my dumbass idiot brain goes, I can just pick this up and fix it as opposed to using a brush or a tool or literally any of the myriad of things that are designed to make that easier than my dumb monkey fingers. But, uh, no. Brain says pick up and fix. Brain that is often very wrong about things. To be fair, with that on top, doesn't look so bad. That looks pretty good, in fact. Pretty satisfied with that. See how well it works on the opposite one? Got 
got put on crooked. Am I able to correct that? Remains to be seen. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. That's got some, like, flair to it, and it still kind of gets, like, a little bit of old hammer feeling with the checkers and the red. I'm about it. We're gonna do more, because the best thing that you can do when you've barely succeeded is try it again, like, six other times. I think that's just science, right? That's what science says. You're playing Stellaris, listening to you ram- Stel Stellaris? I don't know that game. Listening to me ramble about transfers. Yeah, yeah. That'll do. That'll do. Um, I think I want to do that one, but I'd have to do two of them, because one of them isn't long enough. So let's just commit the same exact crime- no. We're going to commit different crimes. Better crimes. We have more checkerboard. It makes sense to do checkerboard wrapped around it the same way that I was thinking before. Why commit the same crime we just committed when we could do a new one? Hobby crimes with fives. That's what the names of this stream should really be. I should just, I should rebrand no more chill painting streams but then i'll get people thinking this is actually like a true crime thing instead of me just being really dumb about supplies what do you guys think probably be more accurate advertising off off times on the stream i am not chill stellaris is 4x space game cool love space is it like a like survival in space kind of thing is it like a farming in space is it like a shooting aliens in space what genre of a space game are we talking here No, I shouldn't have touched that part. Oh, I fixed it pretty quickly, though. Gotta remember that uh, until the slides dry, they're still very mobile. That one broke a little bit, but that's okay. Can probably fix that. Plus we have a second, so if we really fuck it up, we got a spare one.
I'm just slowly ruining this by degrees, which, you know, at least that's better than ruining it all at once. Ooh. Everything's falling on the floor. That's okay. That's okay. Can still recover from this. And it almost gone on perfect the first time, too, which really fucking kills me. Like, it applied dead center right where I wanted it on the edge that you're gonna see it the most. So I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna fuck that up. There's just that little gap in there, which, again, I can either ignore or fill with something small. He's fine. He fell over. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Hobby crimes imply the existence of hobby laws and you prefer ha hobby anarchy yeah that's that's fair that's very fair that is extremely fair oh everything's buffering in my house all at the same time that's fun Building a galactic empire for X strategy games, like your civilization or Europe Universalis. Okay. I don't know any of those. I've never played Civilization, but I think I have the vague concept um, of what that is. You wish your groceries would show up so that you could paint. Do you do like DoorDash or Instacart or... Tes Tesco is is that a store or delivery service in the UK? I don't actually know. I'm not from the UK. Well, I could probably I could probably put a little diamond or something on there. Yeah. Just covering my mistakes with yet more mistakes. Don't worry, there's plenty to be made. We still haven't even sealed all of this yet. That'll be fun to do. But I figure it makes sense to put the decals on and then do the lighting. Or, or well, then, then do the weathering and then do the lighting. Hell yeah. That looks intentional now. That looks completely intentional. I like it. Now let me not touch that. And continue to decorate. Because we're not done yet. We're almost done. But I think we've got... I think we've got a few more that we can slap on here.
feel like I tore that one, so we're gonna go for the other one in the set. Dash, yeah. I often order my groceries via DoorDash or something as well because going to the grocery store can be a lot for me sometimes. Also, very bad at making like plans for what I want to eat for the week, so. Sometimes it's like, I have, I have no idea. And I'll just Google a bunch of recipes and be like, yep, that sounds good. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I like that there. Or at least not on the direct center. Yeah. That's not gonna go there. I think maybe a stripe across the front part would work, but... No! I touched the decal! Fuck. Oh no! That, that's cruel. You go but right back where you were. Yeah. There you go. I was trying to edit, you know? I was trying to be conscious what looked good and what didn't. I think that'll stay there. That looks okay. Uh, I think I want to add... A little, little serial number on the back. Obviously, I'm going to choose the number five because, you know, it's my number. Every store is a big hike, very stressful, and you have no car. Yep. Uh, similar, similar position. There's one store that I can walk to, which is really, it's nice to have that. Um, I really value having that near me. But they don't stock, um, they're like a, uh, they're a Mexican grocery store, which is cool. They stock a lot of stuff that I would never use, and they stock, like, a lot of stuff that's just, like, you know, vegetables and produce and stuff that I've, everybody uses. But sometimes I'm looking for uh, other cuisine or just like, you know, stuff that's um, that's not sold there. So I have to, uh, have to get uh, some stuff ordered in. Uh, hot tip, don't use a Ziploc container for getting your transfers, because, uh, it's just, it's just caught in the rim of there. There we go. Of course, the number five goes exactly where I want it in a matter of seconds. That were, you know what? That's appropriate. I kind of want to put a little stripe of checkers right across here in like where that white stripe on the claptrap robot would be. Um, 
If I screw it up, it's gonna be very apparent, though. I don't know that I have extra uh, checkers. That looked to be all of the ones that I had on that orc transfer sheet. I thought I had like 32 million orc transfers sitting around here. Um, let's see if I can find any more in this drawer. That's Tau, that's not Orcs. Tower Pool. <laughs> Eight chips. Nope. That might have been my only other Orc transfer sheet. Oh dear. I don't really want to overwhelm this with another pattern. Restraint for me? That's weird. Uh, and do I have any boxes for sitting around for any transfers in other places? Let's see. None in the squeaky drawer. But it did make a squeak for us. This is the problem when, you know, I'm like, eh, I have two billion orc transfers. I don't really need to keep another one. I do have this box of orc loos, so that might have a transfer sheet in it. Let's see. Got bases, got instructions, got sprues. Nope, no transfer sheets in that one. Ah well. Probably just means that's the universe telling me to quit while I'm ahead. But I do feel like there was another- Oh yeah, there was another um, checkerboard. It fell on the ground while I was cutting out the other one. So maybe I can find that. <laughs> Waste not, want not. There it is. Yep. I knew I had another one. Ha <laughs> ha! Victory is mine. Hopefully I've trimmed that correctly. Put some water on there. We have a little bit of a backup if we screw it up. But that one line of checkers across the front should be good. And then, theoretically, this one little mech should have enough transfers on him to satisfy me. It's It's been quite a few that we've put on this poor little guy. Poor Albert. He's had to endure some, uh, some times here. I am messing up this transfer before it's even ready to come off the backing paper. Yeah, that'll work. You can slap a little tiny bit of, like, rust or weathering right there. That should look good. Alternatively, we can try and put the other transfer. See if we like that one. Yeah. I 
think I'd like it better as one solid piece. So I think we'll set these ones aside for now and see if we can't actually get one full solid one out of the remaining one that we have. See, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight squares. We'll be a little bit more patient this time, soaking the backing paper, waiting for that to come away naturally instead of just jabbing it. I can be patient. Will all Tau be lemon pie themed or will there be other pastries? A great question, I only want to watch it. Um, they're all going to be key lime pie themed so that they will be a beautiful united army. Um, so yeah, I do have the the test model um he's just about all finished there's some little adjustments that i want to make um but then yeah i think i need to get a more bright glowing effect uh which i'm gonna figure out how to do but uh once i get that problem solved they're all the color scheme is finalized so uh we will We'll get moving forward with that and finishing up that, well, finishing up, progressing on the Tau Army project, because it's not going to be finished for a while. There's a lot of Tau what needs painting. Can you imagine if I tried to actually use water slide transfers for my cool boys instead of just painting on their damn checkers? I would have been cursing out water slide transfers from here until Kingdom Come. I did not cut that appropriately sized. Which means I now need to try to pick it up and cut it to the right size with not damaging it. Miracles. Miracles can happen. Just happened. All I gotta do is nudge it into place. I think I want it slightly higher. There we go. It's not quite even. There. All of the decals are on Albert now. He looks great. I just gotta not touch anything until that water dries. So I'm gonna put him uh, over to the side so I don't accidentally uh, mess him up. Which, you know, would be absolutely something that I would do. And we'll see if I still like that <laughs> in 20 minutes. Because if not, I might just take the... Uh, yeah, I kind of don't like that, even now that I'm looking at it. Mm. Okay. I spent a lot of time trying to get that checkerboard right, but... Listen, what if we flipped it around and did it the other way? Had it up and down. Or just didn't have it at all. Maybe that's what you're supposed to do. Maybe this was a bad idea. I just thought it needed a little something on this, you know, flat top part, but maybe the lesson I should have learned was that it didn't, and I could have just quit while I was ahead.
yeah, that's that's the lesson we're learning today. Editing, it's important. All right, now I'm just gonna, for realsies, put him to the side and not touch anything. <laughs> Drones is whipped cream or ice cream? No, they're also gonna be key lime pie. Everything in the army will be key lime pie themed. Uh, it'll all go go together under one theme. Alrighty. So, we've got that done. He's sitting over there. Uh, the next thing to do will be to throw a, a coat of varnish over the decals so that they don't get messed up. And I'll do some weathering and some lighting effects on him. Um, I do have a couple other things that I could paint, but I think I'm going to call it for this stream really enjoyed having you guys here watching me uh fumble around with water slide transfers as is my usual method for applying transfers to miniatures it it's very typical uh that that vision that you saw is a 100 percent how every other slide transfer has gone for me um they're a process not one I'm particularly good at. There's, I mean, there are other projects I want to do. Like, I have these really sweet Relic Blade miniatures that I want to get working on. Um, I'm pretty excited about them. They're metal miniatures, and I don't paint a lot of metal minis, so I'm interested to see how that's going to go. His hand feels, oh, yeah, his hand did come off, so let me re-glue that. Yes, I'm using super glue and not drilling and pinning because I, I'm just me, okay? I'm one human and I'm only so good at this. Last time I had to put some green stuff on there to help me hold the arm in place. Uh, again, because I just, I, I'm just not really a uh, drilling and pinning kind of person. There we go. Fixed it. Uh, but I got this eel guy. I've got these little fish guys. I've got a hammerhead guy. Do the Tau have a name? Like a bakery name? Um, they are the Key Lime Pie Sept. Tau have septs, I think is what they're called. They're like, um, allegiances or whatever. They're clans. They're guys that they hang out with. But I've spelled it K-E-E apostrophe L-Y-M-E. Because, uh, that's, that's pretty much how Tao spell things with apostrophes and stuff like that. I thought it was clever enough. I was pleased with it. I think it'll work. I think it, it it's got a it's got a vibe to it enough that it it carries the theme and it's also uh you know in line with the key key lime stuff. Yeah, their sept is like I don't know. I've still I've got the rule book somewhere, but let's be real. I skimmed that and there's a lot there's a lot going on with Tao. Like they have a lot of rules, a lot of shit to figure out. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And like, I have a drone here that's got the, the start of what I'm gonna do with the drones, but it is just gonna be like a lime. Um, so it's gonna, it's gonna have the different segments and 
this part will be like the rind and it'll it'll hopefully look like a lime in the end um that's the idea anyway there's so many tau to paint uh i haven't even counted up how many tau there are but it's a lot and um it's a little bit of an intimidating project so i'm hoping that i'm able able to to get it going and figure it out and progress but it's kind of on the back burner while I finalize the color schemes and um, figure out how exactly I want to proceed with it because it's a it's a it's a bit of a big project. But anyway, yeah, that is that is for future me to figure out. Um, but this is this is where I'm going to end the stream. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.